In previous videos, we have designed state feedback for a hanging pendulum model, as well as a reference feed forward for the same pendulum model. We have also simulated and evaluated the state feedback design, but we have not yet simulated and evaluated the reference feed forward design. In this video, we simulate and evaluate the reference feed forward for the hanging pendulum model. The plant for this example is the same one we have used in previous videos, that of a pendulum linearized at the hanging position. The setup is shown here. The frictionless pendulum has a length of 1 meter, a tip mass of 1 kilogram, the input U is the torque applied to the pivot point, the first state X1 is the pendulum angle, the second state X2 is the angular velocity, and the output y is the horizontal displacement of the pendulum tip. The state variable model linearized at an angle of zero is shown on the left. The problem is to introduce the reference input such that the output follows the reference input exactly in steady state. We have previously designed the state feedback gain vector k such that both the closed loop poles are located at minus four. This means that the closed loop system is critically damped. We have also calculated the reference feed forward gain n that would let the output y follow the reference input r exactly in steady state. Note that the state feedback determines the closed loop poles, which determines the transient response, whereas the reference feed forward determines the steady state response. Adding the reference does not influence the closed loop poles which means that we can first design the state feedback without considering the reference and then add the reference. A block diagram of the linearized plant model with state feedback and reference feed forward is shown here on the right. The plant has been drawn directly from the linearized plant model. The rest of the block diagram has been drawn from the control law. The first term of the control law multiplies the reference input with the feed forward gain. The second term multiplies the states with the feedback gains, which are subtracted from the first term to form the plant input. Note that here we still make the unrealistic assumption that the states are available for feedback. We will get rid of this assumption at a later stage. Let's now simulate the response of the linearized plant to a step signal applied to the reference input. A pendulum visualization is shown on the left. The top plot shows the plant input, the middle plot shows the output and the reference input, and the bottom plot shows the angular velocity. The red line on the visualization shows the desired pendulum position as commanded by the reference input. We can see that the steady state pendulum position is indeed equal to that commanded by the reference input, which confirms that we have calculated the reference feed forward gain correctly. Let's compare this response to the response of the pendulum with state feedback, but without a reference input. This simulation is the same as in a previous video where the initial pendulum angle is 45 degrees. If we compare this response with the previous response, we can see that the transient response, or the way the states transition from the initial to the final states, is the same. The only difference is the steady state pendulum position and the plant input. We can therefore understand state feedback as determining the way the pendulum goes towards the steady state value, and we can understand the reference feed forward as determining the steady state pendulum value or the offset of the response. Let's now apply the state feedback and reference feed forward to the nonlinear pendulum model. We can see that there is a noticeable difference in steady state value between the reference input and the pendulum output. Let's go back to the calculation of the reference feed forward to understand this error. When we look at the calculation of the reference feed forward gain, we can see that it depends on the state variable matrices of the plant model A, B, and C. If the plant model is inaccurate, then this feed forward gain will be inaccurate and will cause a steady state error. For our example, 
the linearized pendulum model is a bad approximation of the nonlinear pendulum model far away from the linearization point, which means that we can expect a steady state error for commanded pendulum positions far away from the linearization point. If we look at the block diagram, we can understand the reference feed forward as follows. Based on our knowledge of the behavior of the plant, we calculate what the gain should be that we multiply the reference input with such that the output is the same as the reference input in steady state. However, there is no direct comparison between the reference input and the output, which means that the system cannot correct a steady state error if one occurs. This could be caused by an inaccurate plant model, but also by constant disturbances experienced by the plant. Later in this module, we will look at integral control, which has the ability to force steady state errors to zero. If we look back at what we have seen in this video, we can conclude that the reference feed forward is a viable approach to introducing the reference input if the plant model is accurate and the plant does not experience constant disturbances or if the steady state accuracy is not very important for the application. If this is not the case, then one should use a different approach, such as integral control.